Good morning, friends. Thank you for joining me this morning for a short reflection from God's Word in a time of prayer. I hope that uh, wherever you are and however you're doing, that you're feeling God's presence. And as you continue to do these psalms with me, I hope that you've been encouraged by the opportunity to be in God's Word, to reflect on His Word. And uh, maybe my reflections aren't the way you would see certain passages, and that's actually helpful. Maybe it's challenging you. Maybe it's uh, giving you fresh reason to go back to the Psalms from a different perspective and to, uh, to learn for yourself the, as you see them each in a different light. Now, as we've gone through the Psalms, we're on Psalm 32 today. Uh, one of the cool things about them is that I hope that you've seen the Old Testament in a different light as well. Remember, this is the Old Testament here. This isn't the New Testament. Frequently, frequently people will say, oh, well, you know that the Old Testament God's really mean, and in the New Testament God's really nice. And uh, I hope you're seeing from David's perspective here that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. That it's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that we see his love and his mercy carry through. Well, if you haven't seen that or you haven't been paying attention to that, Psalm 32 is a great place for us to go to root ourselves in this. Psalm 32 is a psalm of uh, repentance. It's a psalm of confession. It's a psalm of David's testimony of God's grace to redeem and heal a sinner who comes and confesses. So without further ado, let's hear David's words as he tells us the story of God's grace on his behalf. Psalm 32, a psalm of David. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him, in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Selah. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly pray to you while you may be found. Surely when the mighty waters rise, they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit or bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. Now, Psalm 32 is a psalm of grace. It's a psalm of David wrestling with what it means to come to God as a sinner and be saved. Now, the story that he tells here is one that should be very familiar to all of us. First, he comes proclaiming that the, the main point of the psalm, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. And then he goes back and he tells us our, his story, that there was that time in his life when he kept silent when he hid his sins. And in that moment, his bones wasted away. He felt distant from God. He not only felt distant from God, he felt God's curse upon him. He felt God's anger. He felt under him as though he was a bright sun bearing down on him. But then he confesses. He comes to God and he confesses his sin. And as he confesses to the Lord, what does he say? He says, and you forgave my sin. And this testimony of David's that God forgave his sin when he confessed it, that instead of finding God's wrath, he found peace with God, becomes for him the highlight of the psalm. It becomes the reason that he says, Now you, everyone who's reading this psalm, therefore let everyone who is godly pray to you. You are my hiding place. You will protect me. You will surround me with songs of deliverance. And I will proclaim and teach others. And he warns us, he says, don't be like those who come to God only when we're dragged by the bridle of the bit, only as he was dragged by his shame and by his, uh, 
by the 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 what's the word that I'm looking for by the Holy Spirit just highlighting his need for confession he says come to God quickly many are the woes of the wicked but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him David invites us to follow in his footsteps to take our sins and to confess them before God, to keep short a short relationship with God, not even waiting till Sunday to confess at church, but daily to say, Lord, this has been my struggle through the day. These have been my, my fears through the day. These have been my angers through the day. These have been my idols through the day. Lord, forgive me. Draw me near to you. Show me your love and your compassion. David calls us to keep short accounts with God so that we can experience the Lord's love, so that we can experience the Lord's favor and the Lord's peace, the peace that we were created to experience with him. Now, I hope that you take some time to read through this psalm on your own, to read through it, to pray through it, to let the Holy Spirit speak to you as you read it and show your heart what it means to draw near to God. Maybe today you'll be one of those who says, you know, I really feel like I'm hiding things in my heart from God and I need to confess them. Or maybe you'll really click into just the joy of what it is to be saved, recognizing that um, we come from a long line of people who've been saved, not by works, not by being saved, being part of the right kingdom or the right family, but only because God forgives those who find refuge in him. And ultimately, that's what this is about. Ultimately, it is being in relationship with God and being in the shelter of his wings, being in his refuge. We know now that we have a king who died for us, that he is the one in whom we take refuge. So today I invite you to join me in prayer and taking refuge in the great King of Peace. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that you came, that you put on flesh to do what no man could do, that you lived a perfect life and you died for us, for our sin, for our hatred, for our rebellion against God the Father. And there from the cross, as you died, you said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even as we mocked you, even as is our sins that hung you there, even as it was God's wrath pouring out on you because of our rebellion, you forgave and you showed us your love. And you continue to show us your love, risen from the grave, and we celebrate that, that because of you, you have conquered death, and we, with you, can celebrate because death no more has a sting. Lord, I pray that as we come to you today, that we would keep short accounts with you, that we would run to you when we need to run someplace, that we would draw near to you when we feel overwhelmed by the challenges of life before us when we feel despairing, when we feel the wrath of God. Instead of running further away from God, draw us near to you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may delight in knowledge of the free offer of grace that we have been given in Christ. And help us to live for you, calling you Lord and King, that our lives may be for your glory. our high Lord. I thank you for this time. Amen. Well, friends, I hope that you have a beautiful day and uh, that you feel very close to your Heavenly Father wherever you go and whatever you do today. God bless you. Bye-bye.